getting very close to the boundary. We don't know how close because no spacecraft has ever been there before. But it could be another few months, it could be another few years, but it's probably not much longer. Humanity has always been fascinated by the sky above and the oceans below. Curiosity is one of humanity's strengths and will continue to be a prominent trait. Countless people have wondered what is beyond our world and their inquiries have led to new discoveries about the universe. The universe is vast and we know very little about it, but humanity is anxious to unravel its greatest secrets, like as the National Aeronautics and Space Administration's Voyager have been carried out to increase our understanding of the cosmos. However, if the stars are not aligned, two of the most remarkable spacecrafts ever launched would never have launched. The stars in this scenario were actually planets, the four largest in the solar system. 45 years later, both probes are still travelling across interstellar space. Researchers, some of whom are younger than the spacecraft, are actively exploiting Voyager data to solve riddles within and beyond our solar system. And recently, Voyager 1 came across something unusual. What is this most recent discovery? What are the probes up to now? What challenges will these spacecraft face in the coming years? All of this will be revealed in today's video. NASA's twin Voyager probes, launched in 1977, dazzled the world with historic journeys to Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. Some 60 years ago, these planets were slowly wheeling into an arrangement that had last occurred during Thomas Jefferson's presidency in the early years of the 19th century. For a while, the rare planetary set piece went mostly unnoticed. Gary Flandro, a doctoral student in aeronautics at the California Institute of Technology, was the first to draw attention to it. It was 1965 and the space age was just getting started. The Soviet Union had launched Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite only eight years before. Flandro, who was working part-time at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, was tasked with determining the most efficient way to send a space probe to Jupiter or possibly Saturn, Uranus or Neptune. He charted the orbital paths of those giant planets with a pencil, a favourite precision tool of 20th century engineers, and discovered something intriguing. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, all four would be strung like pearls on a celestial necklace in a long arc with Earth. As a result of this coincidence, a spacecraft may gain speed from the gravitational pull of each large planet it passes through as if it were being dragged along by an invisible rope that suddenly snapped, sending the probe flying on its course. One disadvantage was that the alignment occurred only once every 176 years. To reach the planets while the lineup was still in effect, a spaceship would need to be launched by the mid-1970s. As it turned out, NASA designed two spacecraft to take advantage of this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. In the summer of 1977, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, which were identical in every manner, were launched within 15 days of one another. They've been in space for 45 years, sending data back to Earth every day from the solar system's most distant planets. Earlier observation of Jupiter's and Saturn's moons by the Voyager spacecraft, which were presented to shocked astronomers 40 years ago, revealed the presence of active volcanoes and fissured ice fields on worlds that astronomers had imagined would be as dormant and crater-pocked as our own moon. In 1986, Voyager 2 was the first spacecraft to fly by Uranus, and three years later it sailed by Neptune. It is the only spacecraft that has gone in this manner thus far. As pioneering interstellar probes more than 14 billion miles from Earth, they are currently startling physicists with a variety of unexpected discoveries concerning that unexplored region. Finally, their incredible journey is drawing to an end. NASA has shut off heaters and other non-essential components during the last three years in order to extend the spacecraft's energy supplies as far as possible to 2030, which is the predicted end date. It's a bittersweet occasion for the scientists working with the voyagers, many of whom have been with the mission since its inception. They are now faced with completing a project that exceeds their wildest expectations. Returning to Jupiter, the spacecraft began transmitting the first photographs of the planet despite being three to four months distant. It was completely unexpected for Io to appear in colour prior to the Voyager expeditions, 
It was assumed that all moons in the solar system would be the same, dull and cratered. The extraordinary variety of moonscapes that the Voyagers discovered in the vicinity of Jupiter and Saturn was not anticipated. When the Voyagers were still approximately one million miles away from Jupiter, the first clue that there may be more moon kinds than scientists had expected arose. The Low Energy Charged Particle LECP, detection system, one of their equipment, noticed some unusual signals. The cameras on board the Voyagers revealed that Io has active volcanoes. The Little World, which is slightly larger than the Earth's moon, is now known to be the most volcanically active body in the solar system. The components spewed by the moon's volcanoes are responsible for the colours of Io, as well as the anomalous ions that strike the detector. Pele, the most powerful of Io's volcanoes, has emitted plumes 30 times the height of Mount Everest, and its ash field is about the size of France. Voyager 2 discovered 10 new moons circling Uranus in 1986, increasing the planet's ringed world count to an ever-increasing amount. Three years later, as it flew around 2,980 miles above Neptune's azure methane atmosphere, Voyager 2 saw the greatest wind speeds yet recorded for a planet in the solar system, reaching up to 1,000 miles per hour. Triton, Neptune's largest moon, was determined to be one of the coldest places in the solar system, with a surface temperature of minus 391 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 235 degrees Celsius. Ice volcanoes blasted nitrogen gas and propelled particles five miles into the moon's atmosphere. If Carl Sagan, an astronomer on the mission's imaging crew, had not been present, Voyager 2's images of Neptune and its moons would have been the last ever obtained by either spacecraft. NASA planned to turn off the cameras on both spacecraft after the grand tour was officially completed. Despite the fact that the project had been extended in the hopes that voyagers would reach interstellar space and had been renamed the Voyage Interstellar Mission, there would have been no photo opportunities after Neptune, only continuous nothingness and impossibly far off stars. Sagan urged NASA officials to order Voyager 1 to send another batch of images, and as a result, on Valentine's Day in 1990, the probe directed its cameras back toward the inner solar system and took 60 final images. At a distance of 3.8 billion miles, Earth was captured by the most captivating of them all, dubbed the Pale Blue Dot by Sagan. It is still the most distant representation of our planet ever obtained. Earth is hardly visible in the shot because it is obscured by faint sunlight reflected off the camera's optics. It doesn't even take up a whole pixel in the image. However, as they moved into the interstellar portion of their journey, Voyager 1 picked up on something that was out of the ordinary. The interstellar medium, like the ocean, is full of turbulent waves. The largest are caused by the rotation of our Milky Way galaxy, as space smears against itself, creating undulations tens of light years across. Smaller ripples rush from supernova explosions spanning billions of kilometres from crest to crest. The smallest waves are usually caused by our Sun, as solar eruptions send shock waves through space that permeate the lining of our heliosphere. These crashing waves reveal information about the density of the interstellar medium, which influences our understanding of the shape of our heliosphere, how stars form, and even our own position in the galaxy. As these waves reverberate through space, they vibrate the electrons around them, which ring out at different frequencies depending on how closely they are packed together. The electron density increases as the pitch of the ringing increases. The plasma wave system on Voyager 1, which includes two antennas protruding 10 meters 30 feet behind the spacecraft, was designed to detect that ringing. It's very faint and monotone because it is in a narrow frequency bandwidth, said Stella Koch Ocker, a PhD student in the Department of Astronomy and the Cornell Center for Astrophysics and Planetary Science at Cornell University. We're detecting the faint persistent hum of interstellar gas. This enables scientists to better understand how the interstellar medium interacts with solar wind, as well as how the interstellar environment shapes and modifies the solar system's heliosphere. Three months after leaving the heliosphere, Voyager 1 heard interstellar sounds for the first time in November 2012. Six months later, there was another whistle, this time louder and higher in pitch. The interstellar medium appeared to be getting thicker and quickly. These brief whistles can still be found in the Voyager data at irregular intervals. 
They've only been seen about once a year, so relying on these kinds of fortuitous events meant that our map of the density of interstellar space was kind of sparse, Dr. Rocker explained. Dr. Rocker and colleagues set out to fill in the gaps with a running measure of interstellar medium density that does not rely on shock waves propagating out from the Sun. They discovered a promising candidate after filtering through the Voyager 1 data, looking for weak but consistent signals. It began to pick up around the time of another whistle in mid-2017. The new signal is known as plasma wave emission and it appears to track the density of interstellar medium. The tone of the emission rises and falls with the appearance of the abrupt whistles in the data. The signal is also similar to one observed in Earth's upper atmosphere, which is known to track with electron density. Based on the signal, electron density around Voyager 1 began to rise in 2013 and peaked around mid-2015, representing a roughly 40-fold increase in density. It is anticipated that the spacecraft will eventually leave these turbulent shores behind and come into contact with something new in the interstellar space. The voyages have lasted longer and travelled farther than any other spacecraft in history. They are the first objects created by humans to enter interstellar space and they will remain so for at least another few decades. Overall, not a bad record considering the Voyager missions were only supposed to last five years. Voyager 1 will pass by Proxima Centauri, our nearest neighbour star, in 16,000 years, while Voyager 2 will take 20,000 years. They will then spend millions of years orbiting the galaxy long after our Sun has died. Let us know what you think about the Voyagers in the comments section below.